Shane Stevens, and uh, I read an article on the internet uh, that I was uh, interested in. I hope uh, you guys could respond to it. Uh, uh, one of the things that I uh, posited was that the theory of evolution, like it was an intellectual jump that you have to make to, to get it, and then there's consequences which are really threatening to people's beliefs. And so it's the suggestion that the uh, gentleman had was that maybe you can try to teach them something similarly unintuitive, but doesn't have the same threatening uh, aspects to the beliefs. And the thing that he cited, not as an instance of evolution, but just something that was similarly unintuitive was Wikipedia. Like Wikipedia, I mean, it's a very strange idea. You, you have anyone edit something, and you would think that garbage would come out. And instead, you actually get something that is really useful. So I was just wondering if there's any Similar things that you can use to get people to kind of hone their these unintuitive ideas to get them to step into the idea of evolution, kind of in a more step by approach that isn't as threatening. Thank you. I'd like to pay tribute to Wikipedia. I, I, when, when I was first told about it, I, my immediate reaction was, well, obviously that won't work. Um, I mean, it's just a ridiculous idea that, that people could actually go in and, and edit. And then I went in and had a look, and I looked up something that I, that I know something about. Uh, and I was astounded at how good it was. Yeah. Um, and I tried the experiment of altering something. Um, <laughs> uh, it actually need, needed to be altered. I, 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 lo I looked up natural selection, because I know a little bit about that, and it, and it, it was a, an, an almost perfect article. It was really, really, really good. But there was one thing that stood out like a sore thumb, which was a recommendation of a book which had nothing whatever to do with natural selection, but m maybe there was one sentence in it that has something to do with natural selection, but it clearly a book that didn't belong in an encyclopedia article on, on natural selection. Um, so I removed the reference. Uh, and next day it was back. <laughs> So I, res I removed it again, and I think uh, within minutes it was back. <laughs> um, but th these examples are relatively rare, and uh, so I, I, I do think it's, a, it's an astonishingly counterintuitive uh, feat of, uh, well, of, of human achievement. But the question I asked, the interesting question, um, could you, I, I take it you mean soften up people to evolution by pointing to something which is less threatening, uh, which might be equally hard to understand. I don't quite see what, why Wik Wikipedia would do that, but as you were talking, I did think that perhaps one way to do a bit of seduction, in, 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 not quite in, in Lawrence's way, but, in a, but in, in, in a different way, rather than trying to seduce people by saying evolution is fully compatible with your religion, which I don't think it is, to say evolution is not a handbook of immorality and violence. It doesn't lead to Hitlerism. Um, it doesn't degrade humanity to be, uh, to be related to other apes. I say other apes because, of course, we are apes and not just descended from apes. So maybe that's another, that's a kind of seduction technique I could buy into. I, I wouldn't have to compromise my principles by saying evolution is compatible with your supernaturalist hogwash. <laughs> <laughs> but what I could say is, is, is evolution is fully compatible with your, with your morality, with, your, with the fact that you, that you don't steal, you don't kill, uh, you, you mean, and, and, and you're not a racist. All, all these things could be, could be done with a sufficiently sophisticated interpretation of evolution, I have to add, not a naive interpretation. Yeah. Thank you very much for your talk today. I have, I guess, a question for each of you. If the majority of Americans don't believe in evolution, and the truth that they don't, and the majority of Americans go to school, we can see where the family lies, but it can't just be that people start going to church and then it's too late for the school to educate them, because so many people convert to religions as adults. And it's my understanding that all Southern Baptists are required at a certain age to say, oh, I don't believe in all this, whatever it is, nonsense. Um, so that can't be the issue. And my question to you, I guess more Professor Dawkins, because you've been going back to England. Um, I know you're not a political strategist, either one of you, but I'm becoming increasingly frightened in this country that in order to run for political office, 
one has to declare his or her religious bona fides. No, I agree with that. I honestly don't know what to do. I mean, if either of you have a suggestion, I would love to hear it. Um, well, as, as you say, I'm not an American, and uh, I have to be a, a, a bit careful treading in this, in this field, not that I often am. Um, but it, it is certainly very noticeable that American politicians cannot make a speech without mentioning God. British politicians cannot ever mention God when making a speech. Uh, there are religious British politicians, Tony Blair, uh, is a very religious man, just, just been indeed received, would you believe, into the Roman Catholic Church. Um, and, but, but, he, but whenever challenged to, to wear his religion on his sleeve, he would, he would um, retreat hastily. Uh, and he, was, he was challenged by Jeremy Paxman, who, who's Britain's most aggressive television interviewer. He said, in a kind of sneering way, is it really true, Mr. Blair, that you actually pray with George Bush <laughs> and, and Blair said, no, 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 no. <laughs> so it, 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 it is, it, there is something different about the way politicians are trained by their minders and their spin doctors to, uh, to address their public, because everybody believes that the United States is a nation of religious maniacs. I'm not sure that I do believe that. I, I, I think that this country has been maligned. Uh, I don't think it's as bad as all that, anything like. And I think it's up to people who don't take a religious view to stand up and be counted and perhaps form a lobby. Uh, because the other side is very, very good at lobbying. And what politicians really respond to is not so much uh, a perception of what the total number of people who believe in such and such a thing is. They get systematically lobbied by special interest groups. And uh, so there's the Irish lobby, and there's the Jewish lobby, and there's the steel lobby, and there's the, there's the coal lobby, and, the, and the, the oil lobby, and things. And these are powerful, well-financed interest groups. And so maybe what the godless among the American population need to do is to recognize that they really are a very substantial proportion of the population and behave as if they were. Uh, and um, as, as you know, organizing atheists has been likened to herding cats, which is, which is, which is, which is a, a compliment in a way, but it, but it doesn't help to get results in, in the political sphere. Well, you know, the pro part of the problem with that, though, and, and I've been involved in political campaigns in a number of different ways in this country, and, part, and one of, the, one of the, the challenges we've had to trying to create this science debate between the presidential candidates, which is scheduled, by the way, for April 18th in Philadelphia at the Franklin Institute. Now, you can applaud, but it's, it's scheduled, but none of the candidates have yet agreed to do it. So <laughs> you should write the candidates, and, and they need more pressure. Uh, it's, we're, it's at the point where I think it may happen, but the more pressure they can get, the better, because particularly the problem with uh, atheists being a lobby or scientists being a lobby, one of the reasons that, that it doesn't work very effectively is that, is that um, unlike some lobbies, they don't float as a block. Look, we're quiet. I mean, that's yeah, and, and, problem. But, but uh, you know, I don't think that's ever going to happen. Even if scientists disagree with the science policies or funding policies of a candidate, they usually don't make that a monolithic reason mm. for voting. And because the politicians realize that, that they won't vote as a block, and I think probably for good reason they won't vote as a block, they tend to ignore them. And so I think it's pretty hard to take people who by nature um, don't have one overriding idea which is going to you know, be the one reason you vote for a candidate, um, which is on, on the fundamentalist case I think is much easier to imagine people voting specifically. Yeah. Being you don't mean block, do you? You, you mean a one issue. Yeah, you, one you, issue. You, That's yes. the problem. Yeah. And they don't yeah. vote as a one issue thing. 